Okay, so welcome to Research Tips uh, 1. Today what we're going to learn about is how to deconstruct and um, how to de deconstruct and write a summary of a research paper. So um, in, a, in very broad strokes, what I will cover is the backbone, how to extract the backbone of a research paper, the flow and the narrative, how is a research paper um, structured, how different ideas are connected, and the last part is just, you know, um, we will look at, at, at a real example where we're deconstructing uh, a research paper. Uh, and this is, you know, uh, this paper was published in uh, Mikai Connectomics in Your Imaging Workshop. And uh, here, what we'll look at is just a low level deconstruction. So we will not go into details. So hopefully, after uh, this, you know, short talk, you will be familiar of the key. Uh, the key um, sections of a research paper and you will know that how the writer is smoothly leading the leader to the perfect not perfect like say like awesome solution that they're presenting in their paper okay so this is the outline of a research paper how generally a research paper is structured and we're gonna look at this uh, section by section. So the first section is the introduction. So let's zoom in. Right, so the introduction is uh, split into different paragraphs. In the first paragraph, paragraph one, we, uh, we present the context and the motivation of this research work or this, uh, the proposed method. So what you need to, to explain in the, first, um, in the first paragraph is what is the problem you're trying to solve, right? And why this is an important problem to solve. So this motivates the reader to go ahead and, you know, keep reading uh, the paper and exploring uh, what you are proposing, right? So if you're not hooking the reader here, uh, you're putting them off, they're not excited about your research, it's not a good uh, beginning. So in the first, you know, few sentences, you need to be clear about what is the problem you're solving and why you're solving it, right? And then after that, uh, in, the, in the second paragraph generally, you need to talk about the previous works and the limitations so you go over them so there might be a very vast literature and on the topic you're researching for example if you're doing image segmentation or if you're doing uh, uh, classification so these are uh, very well explored topics and there is a broad literature to uh, to explore and to read and to go over so it, it might be quite problematic so what you need to do is to focus your, um, you know, to select the, the papers that are directly linked to your solution, which means, for example, if the proposed method you're, you're implementing can handle uh, missing data or can, uh, uh, can converge very rapidly, so you need to find papers which cannot handle missing data and which cannot converge rapidly. So you group them based on your contribution, contributions generally, okay, your major contributions. How do you do that? So here, I'm just, you know, um, giving two different structures uh, that you can follow to write this paragraph or to develop. It's not just a paragraph, it can be a set of paragraphs, like two or three in your paper. So how do you go about um, grouping those solutions like the previous solutions of the pre or the previous work so the first thing what you can do is let's say you have you know you group different papers here so let's say author it all I don't know maybe 2016 etc so these are all papers or solutions that try to solve that problem or that particular side of your problem okay or aspect then when, once you, 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 you present those solutions, you say, you know, in paper uh, X, you know, authors presented this um, idea, you need to point out their limitations, okay? So this group of methods, uh, this group of methods uh, share, um, shares these sets of limitations. And then after that, you might find another set uh, of methods that address those limitations. So you go to a better solution. So solution two basically addresses the limitations of the previous works, right? And then you keep pointing the limitations of the, the current method. So this is like, you know, progressively, uh, nicely walking the reader to your, 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 your set of um, 
to your solution, the solution that will address all of those limitations. So looking at those limitations, so you'll having a set of those different limitations, let's say, right? So all of those, but those have been addressed. So I want to highlight here, those have been addressed by solution two, uh, limitation two probably by solution three, right? But then when you reach the ultimate solution, the ultimate set of papers, you need to point out their different limitations, okay? So this is here, we're pointing out the limitations of the last set of works, maybe deep learning, right? So we started from machine learning and then the recent methods have solved this problem using different deep learning architectures, for example, GANs, right? But those architectures or uh, might have several limitations, so you need to point them out right here. So these are actually, this set is the most important part because this bit has not been addressed in the literature, okay? So based on those limitations, I would expect that the author, since they pointed, pointed them out, that they will propose a solution like ours or our method that addresses all of those limitations, okay? So then after doing that, in the last paragraph, you will describe your solution. So you say to address these limitations, these are the key steps of the proposed method. So first, second, third, for example. And then the last part of the introduction will be to outline the key contributions. So what are the key contributions of your work with respect to the state of the art? What is the problem or the things that your method can handle and existing methods cannot handle? Okay. Now we have a second part. So the second one is part B. So... If you look at this, so this is a common architecture, and this one, what we have, we have different solutions. So you're grouping all the solutions, right? So you have solution one, solution two, solution three, but all of those, they share similar limitations or gaps. So in this one, what we're doing, we're just putting them all together, okay? So you can say that, do, you know, like different methods have... Uh, you know, handled, for example, this side of this problem, the other ones, the other side, uh, like, you know, all of these different sides of your problem, but then these methods, they did their best, but still, all of them, they have all these limitations, right? So you're going to point them out, and here, after pointing them out one by one, you will say, we propose a method that addresses all of those limitations, okay? Right? So this is another approach. So here, it's more like logical connect you know, uh, you're, you're, you're defining your narrative in a more logical way where all bits are connected. You're, you're going from one, you're progressively or hierarchically uh, <coughs> gravitating your reader to your final solution. But this one you're saying, well, to this problem there have been different, it has been explored on multiple levels, but all these levels, they're still flawed because they have limitations. Okay? Cool. Now let's look at the methods. So... Now, the reader, after reading this and looking at all of this, they want, to, you know, he wants or they want to learn about the proposed solution. So, in the method section, what we do, uh, first, in the first paragraph, generally, you briefly pre present the components of your solution or the proposed method, okay? So, in this Mm, gen what you can do also is like link to your key figure. So this is an important figure. I always call it the heart of the paper because you want your figure to be uh, catchy, to be comprehensive, to be very clear, to explain all the steps of your proposed solution. So this, it will illustrate those components, right? So in the first paragraph, you can say, here is what we propose. Figure one, you know, shows the different steps and you just, you know, give a broad overview of that. Now, in the second paragraph, what you need, and the next paragraphs, like all of those, right? You need to detail the steps. So uh, those steps of your solution or proposed model uh, can be feature extraction, uh, it can be a classification model, can be different steps, right? So you need to, you need to dedicate maybe a paragraph or more, depending on how uh, detailed is your uh, step. Uh, to these different uh, parts and you're explaining or presenting your methodology. So basically, uh, this will pave the way for like this step. Uh, let's say you explain the step of feature extraction right here, step one. But what you need to do, you don't just jump right away to the next paragraph and say, oh, next step. And then you say, I don't know, like uh, 
classification model, right? This is problematic. You need to connect all of those ideas. So your paragraphs in the methodology section need to be uh, connected. So how you do that? You generally pave the way for the next step or motivate, explain the intuition. Why are we going from this step to the next one? So connecting is very important when you're writing a paper, even your summary, okay? So, right, so the rule, generally, this is an important rule, rule. when you write a research paper, you need to write in a generic way uh, the method section, right? So, and also use the active form of writing, like, you know, active verbs, we propose, we uh, process, we extend. So all of those active uh, verbs are better than the passive form that, uh, like, you know, it was proposed or uh, this method, uh, you know, is composed of, it's okay to use passive form from time to time, but keep it, keep it dynamic, keep it active, okay? So what does generic mean here? So it means when you're, basically, when you're using your, inter, using your um, mathematical symbols, you don't specify your variables. So you keep them, uh, like, uh, if you're using a feature vector, you denote it xi for sample i, right? You, need, you, don't, you don't specify how many features you have. So in the method section, you don't say, I have 300 samples, I'm using leave one out generally, okay, for example, or I'm like, I have like a thousand features. So all of those specifications, you do them in the results section. The method section should be generic in such a way that anyone who reads your paper and wants to use it on their data, in their case, it easily blends or like fits their, their scenario, okay? That's why you need to keep it generic. Okay. Now, the results section uh, is probably the easiest part to write, I would say. Um, so in the first paragraph, you, what you need to do is like you describe your uh, evaluation data set. So this is just um, uh, a simple plot, but it can be more complex and richer. But this is like a simple backbone of a results section in a research paper. So in the first paragraph, you, you introduce your evaluation uh, uh, data set, what you're using, how many samples you have, right, all those things. Uh, if you have any pre-processing steps of your data, you explain them here, okay? Then, um, right, this is the same thing. And processing steps, if you pre-process and you, know, you currently process the data. And then maybe distribution of your data, how many samples, what is like, you know, if you're doing... Uh, uh, like you're doing a classification problem, how many samples you have in the first class and second class, so different things. Now, in the second paragraph, you need to explain your evaluation strategies, what kind of cross-validation method or strategy you're using, right? Uh, evaluation metrics, the measures, like if you're using accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, if you're using, for example, um, uh, the dice ratio in case of segmentation problems, okay? So, and then if you have, you would have generally parameters for your model. So what you need to do is like you need to explain uh, or uh, detail the parameters of your model and how did you fix them? Did you use a grid search? Did you uh, uh, use nested cross-validation? Were they empirically set? So it's very important to, you know, kind of, you know, uh, give an idea about that at this stage. And the last part here is the benchmark or comparison methods. So all of this just, you know, things you have already implemented. So what are you benchmarking your method against, right? And in the next paragraphs, you might have many other paragraphs here, okay? So what you will do, you will go over your figures. So you have different figures, different experiments, figure one, figure two, uh, table one, table two. You will create a nice narrative, a nice order of, you know, you will order them in a logical way that should fit and match your 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 narrative, your introduction, your steps, right? And you will you will and also your contributions, right? So you will evaluate each contribution probably independently. It depends on how you write your paper. But here basically you you describe your figures and tables uh, without any interpretation. So this is an important thing because in the results section you don't interpret, you don't explain, you just describe what you see. Okay? And, uh, for example, you can say figure one shows, figure one displays, illustrates, schematizes, etc. So, once we uh, get to the discussion section, right? So, these are, this is the typical structure of a discussion section. So, the first paragraph, 
we present a brief recap or a summary of uh, what we propose in this paper. So generally, you might find in many papers, in this paper, we proposed, we devised, we designed, things like that, and explain your solution. Then you need to highlight the strength of the proposed solution. So this is, you know, basically why your, your solution is awesome, right? And after that, uh, you can say also that your solution uh, outperformed baseline, like, uh, you know, comparison methods, has the best, achieved the best performance in comparison to existing approaches, etc. And then when we, uh, we go into the second paragraph, so after doing that in the first paragraph, in the second paragraph, you need to discuss and interpret your results. Okay, so now you go back to your figures, following the same order, and it's time to discuss and explain why you got those results. So why your method might fail in some cases. You need to give an intuition, you need to find an explanation, right? Uh, also, you need to connect your findings with state-of-the-art methods, like other works. If you're like, I don't know, uh, if you're using machine learning to study uh, the disordered brain, you discovered some biomarkers, key features, you need to connect them to, you know, previous studies and say, look, what we discovered has, it's like, has, you know, exists in the literature, so we're reproducing, we're confirming, you know, what has been discovered. Or you might find out something completely different, right? So you need to explain that. Uh, in the light of previous works. And this can be different, like many paragraphs, basically, right? Not just one. Then you go uh, into the next section, which subsection, which is like discussing the parameters of your proposed method. So sensitivity of your model to your, the parameters. Uh, you can add new figures here in, just for the discussion section, right? To explain how your parameters are, uh, how you tune them, how uh, are they sensitive, right? Uh, uh, to uh, change, it. like, how is your method or performance sensitive to different um, uh, values of your parameters, etc. So you, st you basically uh, discuss your parameters here. And then you can add a few things, but the most important thing, you need to keep connecting your ideas and need to be coherent and need to, to flow nicely. The last part is limitations and future directions. So in this part, what you do, you need to point to be self-critical, and quite humble also about your discovery. So you, you need to point out your weaknesses, the weaknesses of your method. And then you need to look ahead as a visionary. You need to see how you're going to address your own weaknesses, right? So you say, our method has this limitation. We can probably use, you know, get inspired from a different work, right? Maybe published in 2018 and integrate this idea in our uh, framework to address that limitation. Okay, so you need to to uh, suggest potential solutions or potential research directions that can further improve your method. Right now, in the conclusion section, uh, it's quite simple. So it's like a mini like a mini discussion, but it's like uh, you're wrapping everything up. So. Uh, you just give a brief recap, also highlight the key strength of your method again, and then you need to point out one limitation in a future direction. So it's quite uh, crispy and short, but generally I tend to split limitations between discussion and conclusion sections. So the limitations uh, uh, I point out here will not be exactly the same limitations uh, limitation I point out in the, uh, in the conclusion section. Okay, cool. I hope it's uh, clear now. So this is just, you know, a shallow, like, kind of uh, overview of how a research paper is structured. Any questions? So your summaries should follow this somehow. Right.